Okay, welcome back to PowerPoint 2016. This is Cindy again. We're working in Module 10, and we're going to talk a little bit in this module about working with charts. Now, charts are actually an Excel feature. You can make a graphical representation of your data using a chart. You're going to see there are line charts, and there are all kinds of column charts, and just a whole bunch of different types of charts you can play with. So you have the ability to use that charting feature from Excel over in PowerPoint. So come on over and let me show you how it's going to work. All right, so we're back in our presentation and what I want to do is go ahead and add a new slide. I'm going to use the title and content layout. And what we want to do in this particular case is go ahead and chart our student count for our different locations for the college. So once I get the title in, I'm going to come down here where it says Insert Chart. And then it's going to allow me to pick from several different chart layouts. Now I want you to notice that the most common layout is what's called a clustered column. But notice you can put in line charts, you can put in pie charts, bar charts, area charts. You can see the different types of charts that you can insert. Now just so you will know, from tree map down to combo, these are all brand new for Office 2016. If you had a previous version of Microsoft Office, you won't see those. Now, when you click on a particular chart layout, you're going to notice there are several different subtypes you can pick from as well. Now, you've got several here. Clustered common, like I said, is the most common. But you can have a stacked column or a stacked column 100%. And these have like a little three-dimensional effect. And the same thing for any of these, like the pie chart, for example. Here's one that's a 3D pie. But you can just look through the list and kind of pick the one that you want. Now, if you're really into charts and you want to know how the different layouts might help you relay information to your audience, you might want to think about taking an Excel course related to charts where they talk a little bit more about the different layouts. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and just choose a basic column chart. And we're going to go ahead and click OK at the bottom. And then you'll see here's our basic chart. Now, a very common question that comes up at this point is, where did this data come from? What happens in Microsoft Office products is if you're working actually in Excel, then you can actually type in your data and the charts created right there. But if you're using this feature that's an Excel feature in Microsoft Word or in PowerPoint, for example, then it puts in this default data and you change it. And as you change it, your chart will update. This is a data sheet and this is a chart, so the data sheets and charts are linked. Now, I'm going to go ahead and expand the data sheet a little bit because I want to type in some data that represents our student enrollment. So let me have some rows here. We'll have a row that represents our main campus. We're going to have one that represents our St. Philip's Annex. We'll have a row that represents our Childers Annex. And the last one at the bottom is going to be our other off-site locations. Now across the top here, I'm going to put some column headings in. And these are going to be the different years. So I'll start with 2012, 2013, 2014. And notice that I just tabbed to get over here to put 2015 in. But it wouldn't let me. It just went down to column A, row 2. Now here's why. If you see this blue box right here, that's the outline of the data that's going to be represented in the chart. See how I can grab this little box in the bottom right and get that black double arrow? I can actually expand that if I want to include additional information. So that's how you put in your row headers and your column headers. Now by the way, in charting terminology, these are going to be called your X and Y axes. So X always represents your categories and Y always represents your values. So we're going to talk more about that when we talk about formatting here shortly. But let me go ahead and plug in some numbers here. Let's say we had 1500. Notice how the chart is actually being updated as soon as I type in the number and hit the Enter key here. So that's why I said earlier that charts and data sheets are linked. All right, let's put in the 2014 numbers. Okay, one more. We've got 2015. We'll have a lot here. Okay, 
There you go. Now, if you didn't want to include some of this data in your chart, grab that same little box on the bottom right and just bring it in a little bit like this, and that data is excluded from your chart. So let me go ahead and include it again. So that's how you're going to actually put in the data which creates the chart. Now, if you're finished working in your data sheet here, as it's called, go ahead and just close it out, and then you can do whatever you need to to this chart here. So let me go ahead and just show you real quick where you would go if you didn't choose a layout that had a button to insert a chart. So maybe you'd pick the blank layout, for example. So what you would do is you would click on Insert, and you'll notice here under the Illustrations grouping is Chart. And when you clicked on Chart, the same window would appear where you can pick the type of chart and then type in your data. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. just wanted you to know where to go to do that. So now that you know how to actually insert a chart, let's talk a little bit about formatting this chart to make it look a little bit nicer and maybe to make some things stand out. So go ahead and go over to Section 2 and I will see you over there. Hi, Molly here. Thanks for watching. If you need additional PowerPoint 2016 training, get our free three-hour course for beginners. Click the Get My Free Course button on the left. I'll see you next week with additional videos.